Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In this episode, I want to talk to you about a major problem that Russia is facing with regards to demographics. So we'll have a look at the demographic profile of Russia as it stands today, looking at the different age categories, which clearly highlights a major problem that's been building up in Russia. And then we'll go on to talk about the implications of this for the Russian economy. But also we'll have a look at what the impact of the Ukraine war is on the current demographics, because that is going to make the situation significantly worse. So in today's episode, we'll have a look at the population pyramid for the world. We'll have a look at Russia's and see how that compares to developed countries such as the USA and the UK. We'll talk about the birth rate and the death rate in Russia, because very unusual things have been happening over the last 20 years. So I'll identify what's been going on and why. And then we'll talk about migration because that is a hot topic with regards to the Ukraine war. We've seen mass emigration out of Russia and that's going to have a big impact on the population as well. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary. So what I think is likely to happen in Russia over the next three to five years and how this population issue is going to affect the economy. The population profile of a country is really important. A healthy economy will show lots of people at different stages of their life, with a large chunk of the population being of a working age so that they can contribute to the growth of the economy. Now, generally speaking, a developed country will tend to have a lower death rate than the average because it has a better health system, it has a better standard of living, people tend to be eating better, living better, and therefore they don't die as early, and they will generally have a lower birth rate than the world average. This chart shows the overall population pyramid for the world as of 2022. So you can see that the total population is just under 8 billion. And we've got a spread here of all different age groups. So you can see that the biggest single age group at the moment is the zero to four category. And as we move up the pyramid, you can see there is a slight reduction in the number of people in each age category up until 30 to 34, where we see a slight increase and then a gradual reduction again, all the way through to the final category of 100 plus. So this represents the aggregate for the whole of the world. But as I just mentioned, if we were looking at a developing country, we would see more of a triangular pattern because the birth rate would be higher and there would be a higher percentage of individuals at the bottom of the chart in the younger categories. And the death rate would generally also be higher in a developing country. And therefore there would be less people at the top end of this chart. So it'd be more of a triangle. Now, if we were looking at a developed country, then it would be more of a rectangle because the birth rates and the death rates are lower. So people are generally having less children and they're living longer. So we would see more people at the top end of the chart and slightly less people at the bottom end of the chart. And over here we can see the world population plotted back to 1950. So you can see back in those days we had 2.5 billion people on the planet. And as we move forward on the graph you can see that we're expecting to hit 10 billion population in 2050. And then we'll level off and the population gets to around about 11 billion by 2100. Now, before we have a look at what's going on in Russia, let's have a look at the pyramid for the USA. So as I just mentioned, a developed country would have more of a rectangular shape. And that's exactly what we're seeing here with the USA. We've got a relatively even number of people in each age group between zero and 69. There's roughly around six, six and a half percent of the population in each of those age categories. It does get smaller as we move into the older age categories, as you would expect as people start to die. And another feature that you can notice on this chart is that from 60 onwards, the number of females is more than the number of males. And that's because females have a higher life expectancy in the USA than males. But the overall summary here is that this is a healthy looking chart from an economic perspective because you've got lots of different people at all different working age groups and we don't have an overload of elderly people that would need to be supported by the younger working population, which could cause a problem with regards to pensions. And over on the right hand side here, we can see the population growth from 1950 through to the estimate for 2100. And you can see that there's a relatively steady growth all along the period. Back in 1950, the population of the USA was 158 million. If we move forward to where we are today, it's around about 335 million. And it's estimated that the population will grow to around 433 million by the end of this century. As we're discussing in today's video, the invasion of Ukraine has had a huge impact on the economy of Russia, but it's also impacted on the global economy and returns on investment. Investments. And trying to find a balanced portfolio of investments at times when market conditions are volatile is challenging. 
and 2022 saw the worst performance since 2008 for the stock market. And Goldman Sachs have recently stated that the market is heading nowhere in 2023. As a result of this, fund managers are now looking into low correlation assets because even if markets flatline this year, these assets can continue to climb. And according to a recent report by Citibank, of these assets, the one with the lowest correlation is art. Now, you may be thinking that art as an investment is only available to billionaires. However, Masterworks has come up with a creative structure that lets you invest in multi-million dollar paintings without breaking the bank. And since Masterworks started trading, they've built a track record of 13 exits, all of them profitable. So in view of these dynamics, it's no wonder that Masterworks has seen over 650,000 investors trying to gain access. And as a result of that, there is now a waitlist. Now, I want to make it very clear that I'm not providing investment advice. And before you make any investment, you need to do your own research. However, if you are interested in investing in Masterworks, then Joe Blogs viewers have exclusive VIP access to their latest offerings, which you can check out by clicking the link in the description below. This is the population pyramid for the United Kingdom, which has a very similar profile to the USA. So once again, generally speaking, you can see that each age category between zero and 65 has around six or six and a half percent of the population. And in terms of the population growth, you can see that back in 1950, the population of the UK was around 50 million. It's grown through a combination of birth rate and immigration. It's sitting now at around 68 million and it's forecast to grow to around about 78 million by the end of the century. Now, finally, before we move on to Russia, I thought I'd show you the population pyramid for China, which does have a slightly different look to it. You can see that in the bottom section of this chart between zero and 29, it's the same profile as what we've just seen for the USA and the UK, whereby each category has somewhere in the region of six or six and a half percent of the population. However, the age categories between 30 and 55 represent larger percentages and are coming in around eight or eight and a half percent. And this section represents the period of rapid growth in terms of population in China. And then if you look at the top of the graph, you can see there's a pronounced narrowing. So overall, it's roughly the same shape as the UK and the USA, but there are potentially some problems for China here because they've got a really large chunk of the population who are aging, who are potentially moving out of the workforce at some point over the next 10 to 15 years. And that will put a lot of pressure on the pension system in China because all of these people will be non-working. They'll need to be supported and that will present a variety of challenges for the Chinese authorities. Over on the right hand side you can see the evolution of the Chinese population since 1950. So you can see that it's grown from 555 million to the current level of 1.45 billion but it's forecast to peak at 2030 and then start reducing and it's estimated that the population of China by the end of this century will be just under 1 billion and 65 million. And this is the population pyramid for Russia. Now, Russia is officially a developed economy. So you would have expected this to have a nice rectangular shape, exactly the same as what we saw for the USA and the UK. However, it doesn't. And there are a number of major concerns thrown up by the shape of this pyramid. In a balanced economy, we would be expecting each of these five year age brackets to represent around six or six and a half percent of the population. If you look at the age groups between 15 and 30 in Russia, they are significantly less than what you would expect. The 15 to 19 bracket represents 5.1 percent, 20 to 24 represents 4.5 percent and 25 to 29 represents 5.3 percent. And this represents a significant shortfall in the young workforce in Russia. So these are the people who are either in junior employment or will be entering employment at some point over the next five years. And they will really become the mainstay of the economy over the next 10 to 15 years. They become more productive. They have families, they expand and they spend money. So you really need a solid group to be coming through to be able to support the rest of this pyramid. But if you look at the overall shape of this pyramid, it's entirely unbalanced. If this was a game of Jenga, then you'd be expecting these blocks to be falling down at some point soon. And the other point to note about this chart is the split between male and female. So the other charts that we looked at had roughly a 50% split until you move into the over 70 age category because females tend to live longer than males. But in the Russian pyramid, there are significantly less males than females in every age category from 35 onwards. So if we have a look at the actual numbers rather than the percentages, 
From 40 to 45, there are 5.3 million men and 5.7 million women. 45 to 49, 4.8 million men, 5.2 million women. 50 to 54, 4 million men and 4.6 million women. 55 to 59, 4.2 million men and 5.2 million women. 60 to 64, 4.3 million men and 5.8 million women. 65 to 69, 3.4 million men and 5.4 million women. And 70 to 74, 2.2 million men and 4 million women. Now, these statistics raise a couple of concerns. Firstly, what has been going on with regards to the male population in Russia? Why is it significantly smaller than the female population? And number two, what is the potential economic impact of this for Russia? Because a lot of the workforce is male dominated in Russia. And on the right hand side here, we can see exactly what's been going on with regards to the population. So back in 1950, the population of Russia was around 103 million. Up until 1995, it grew steadily to around 148 million. And since that point, we have seen a fall and then a slight rise. And it's expected that the population of Russia will reduce to around 126 million by the end of this century. This chart shows the fertility rate in Russia since 1950. And the fertility rate is a simple measure that just records how many children each female in the country has. So if the fertility rate is above two, then generally speaking, they have an increasing population because the two parents are producing more than two people. And if the fertility rate is less than two, then you'll generally speaking have a declining population because the two people are producing less than two. So let's focus in on the period between 1998 and 2018. So we can see that in 1998, the fertility rate in Russia was 2.12%. So that would indicate that the population was growing. But as we move forward, you can see that there was a dramatic fall in the fertility rate and hit a low in 1998 of 1.26. And that fertility rate is one of the lowest in the world. From 1998 onwards, there was an improvement. And by 2008, the rate had got up to 1.8. So still less than two. So still indicates a declining population, but certainly better than 1.26. And as a comparison, this chart shows the fertility rate in the USA over the same period. So 1998, the fertility rate was just under two. By 2008, it had risen above two. And today it's sitting at around 1.8. So what happened to the birth rate in Russia between 1988 and 1998? Why did we see such a dramatic fall? Well, this was the period after the breakup of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was disbanded in 1991 and Russia then embarked upon a period of privatization whereby they were looking to work with overseas companies to develop the economy. And in the early part of the 1990s, it worked well. There was prosperity and people enjoyed the new freedom that capitalism gave them. However, at the end of the 1990s, we saw a dramatic fall in the price of oil. It fell to around $10 per barrel. And this decimated the Russian economy. And if you follow the channel, you'll be aware that Russia actually defaulted on its internal debt at that time and it entered a period of recession. And this threw the whole world upside down in Russia. And there's no official reason as to why the birth rate fell. But it's been recorded by a lot of commentators that they believe that the economic uncertainty and the fact that everybody was now operating in a capitalist environment rather than communist led the people of Russia to be more cautious, to be more nervous, to be a lot more downbeat about the future. There was a lot more drinking, alcoholism and depression, and that led to a dramatic fall in the birth rate. So we saw this as a natural consequence of the recession that kicked in in Russia, causing people in Russia to stop having children. And it became so serious that President Putin actually introduced a range of measures, a package incentivizing people to have more children. And that included a payment of $9,000 to any woman who had a second child. So this was literally paying people to get the birth rate back up again. And that policy obviously proved to be a success over the long term because the birth rate has come back. But what we've got is a pronounced 20 year dip in birth rates in Russia, which is now starting to impact on the economy. This chart plots the death rate in Russia and shows the number of deaths per thousand people. So if we look at what happened over the same 20 year period in 1988, the death rate was 11 per 1000 people. Now, that is actually quite a high rate compared to a lot of other developed countries. But between 1998 and 2003, there was a sharp increase in the death rate and it peaked at over 16 deaths per thousand by 2003. 
Now, over the next five years, there was a reduction and the rate came down to 12.7. However, it's subsequently increased and it's now sitting at just below 13. Now, as a comparison, let's have a look at the USA. In 1988, the death rate was just below 9 per thousand. By 2008, the rate had fallen to 8 per thousand and it's now risen back up to 9. So the figures that we're looking at for Russia are significantly higher. 11 at the start of the period, a peak of 16, and back down to around 13 at the end of this period. So the big question is, what's been going on in Russia to cause such a high death rate? Well, again, there's no official reason for this. But the main issue that's been recorded by commentators is unhealthy living, alcoholism and depression, which led to high mortality rates, particularly amongst men. So this explains why the number of men in each age category of the population pyramid was significantly less than women. Now, in addition to birth rates and death rates, the other thing that can affect the population of a country is migration. So that might be immigration, so people coming into the country from other countries, or emigration, people actually leaving the country. This map shows the current number of migrants living in each country across the world, and the size of the bubbles on this chart represents the size of the migrant population. So the bigger the bubble, the bigger the number of migrants. And a migrant is officially recorded as somebody who's living in a country that they were not born in. So if we look at the situation for the USA, there are now over 50 million people recorded as migrants, and that represents around 15.3% of the total population of the USA. So this group of people represents a significant percentage of the total number of people living in America. If we look at the position for Russia, it's quite different. Before the start of the Ukraine war, it was recorded that 11.6 million migrants were living in Russia, which represented around 8% of the total population. Now, I don't have any latest figures to show exactly what the number is today, but we know for a fact that there are over a thousand companies who've either exited from Russia or stopped all of their operations. So a lot of international postings have been recalled. People have left Russia who were previously working in Russia for multinational corporations. So there's been a big exodus of overseas people for that reason. And we've also seen the brain drain. So a lot of intelligent and highly skilled people have decided that they no longer want to live in Russia. And it's reported that up to 1.2 million people have permanently left Russia since the start of the Ukraine war. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think it's really interesting to look at what's going on with regards to the demographics in Russia. And clearly, even before this war started, Russia had problems that were coming through because they had a massive fall in the birth rate and a massive increase in the death rate in the period between 1998 and 2018. So over that 20 year period, they saw a big reduction in future workforce. And that's going to have a huge impact on the Russian economy over the next 20 to 30 years, irrespective of what's happening with regards to sanctions and all the other issues relating to the war. So Russia already had big problems coming through the pipeline. And this will be a massive issue for Russia over the next 20 to 30 years because they've got an aging population and a lot of that aging population will get to retirement age and those people who are retiring will need to be funded by the state and the only way that the state would be able to fund that is by taking taxes from the working population. And of course, if you've got a declining number of people in employment, then that means that you've got a declining amount of tax and therefore you may not have enough cash to be able to pay for that aging population. But it's actually much worse than that, because when you look at the split between men and women, there are far less men in every category than there are women. And that's going to cause a major problem because a lot of the workforce in Russia is male dominated. And therefore, if you've got less men, then you're going to have to change the way everything is structured. There will need to be changes in working practices and equal opportunities will need to be offered in all industries, including oil and gas, which are obviously some of the biggest employers in Russia. But the whole situation could actually be getting much worse because of the Ukraine war. We don't have any reliable official figures, but it's estimated that around 50,000 men have died so far and 150,000 have been wounded in Ukraine. And Russia are now in the process of mobilizing up to another 1 million men. So potentially there could be a lot more casualties over the course of this war. If this war goes on for another 3, 6, 9, 12 months, we could see hundreds of thousands of men either killed or wounded. So that's going to deplete the long-term workforce further. But in the short term, if you're pulling another million people 
out of Russia to send to Ukraine, then you're going to have a declining number of people in employment right now. So this is accentuating all of the problems. Russia is already facing major difficulties with regards to all of the sanctions that are being applied against it. So its industries are struggling anyway to get the sales and the revenue. But if they're now struggling in terms of workforce because men are being taken out of their jobs to go to Ukraine to fight the fight, then that's only going to make matters worse. But the overall summary here is that Russia already had a major problem that was working its way through, and they are making it significantly worse for themselves by losing even more of their vital workforce. So if Russia does decide to continue with this war for the long term, then it's making a rod for its own back. It's going to destroy its own capabilities and bring down its own economy by not having enough people of the right working age for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So this could prove to be a major long-term issue that could bring down the Russian economy. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode. You find it interesting, thought-provoking and entertaining. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. And here's something to put a smile on your face.